Hi, welcome to Elementary and Intermediate Algebra, Chapter 3.3. So, here's what you need to know in this chapter. You need to know how to compare the steepness of various objects, how to calculate the slope, what the difference between a negative slope and a positive slope is, and what the slopes are of horizontal and vertical lines. So, comparing the steepness of various objects. Let's compare the steepness of a driveway and the steepness of Mount Everest. Which one would you say is steeper? You'd probably say Mount Everest. But is it because of its height? Imagine if that the driveway kept on going until it reached 30,000 feet. So it's now a 30,000 feet high driveway. Would you say that Mount Everest is still steeper? Yes, you would. Why? When it comes to defining steepness, we use a term called slope. And we also think, of, think about steepness as how hard it is to climb something. The reason why Mount Everest is steeper than the, still steeper than the 30,000 feet high driveway is that it's because it's harder to climb. The driveway is pretty flat, whereas Mount Everest is a mountain. So what makes something hard to climb? Something is hard to climb when there's a large change in height over a small change in horizontal distance. In math, we call this rise over run, where rise is the change in the vertical distance and run is this change in horizontal distance. The equation for slope is slope is equal to rise divided by run, which is equal to the change in vertical distance divided by the change in horizontal distance. When we compare the slopes of two objects, we compare the rise over run ratios. Let's compare the slope of two hills, modeled by triangles. Which one is steeper? Alright, so let's start at the bottom of the hill, or right here. So the formula for slope is rise over run, or the change in vertical distance over the change in horizontal distance. At the top of the hill, there's a five increase in height. So let's call this the let's call this the rise, the change in vertical distance. And at the top of the hill, we would have moved 15 feet on the bottom, or a 15 feet change in horizontal distance. So now I know the so we, let's divide this. We get that the slope is one third. This one right here. At the bottom of the hill, we have um, we we start right here. When we climb to the top, we have a ten change in, in vertical distance over four, four change in horizontal distance. So now, no, our slope is five over two. Which one is steeper? Well, from our math, we we know now know that the triangle on the right is steeper because the slope is greater. And we can also tell just by looking at it. This one, the right one on the right looks so much steeper than the one on the left, and our math proves it correctly. So the greater the slope, the steeper it is. And the, and the smaller the slope, the more shallow it is. Calculating the slope of a line. So the calculating the slope of a line is the same idea as calculating the slope of an object. So let's f find the rise of a run. The slope of a line is always the same. Therefore, finding the slope of one section of the line is the same thing as finding the slope of the whole line. The easiest way to calculate slope is to pick two points of the line, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and calculate this rise over run from that. We use the same formula as last time. Slope is equal to rise over run, or the change in vertical distance. In this case, it's second y value, y2, minus the first y value, y1, over the change in horizontal distance, which is the second x value, x2, minus the first x value, x1. So let's find the slope of this line. All right, so we've, we you know that the um, let's pick two points. Let's pick um, this last point right here, which is five comma ten, and this first point right here, like zero comma zero. So let's use our formula. Um, so this we'll call this one x two, and we'll call this one we'll call this um x two and and y two, and let's call this one x one and y one. Alright, so let's do our formula. So it's y2 minus y1. In this case, it's 10 minus 0 over the um, x2 minus x1, so or 5 minus 0. So you know that, so this is, so the z, since z, z, subtracting 0 means nothing, this just means 10 divided by 5, which is just 2. So you know that the slope of this line is 2. So let's find the slope of a line containing the points negative 2, negative 6, and 5, comma 15. So now we don't have a graph of the line. We just have two points. This is make this harder. Is this any trickier? 
it's the it's actually the same thing. So notice how the previous one, all we did is pick two points. Now they just give us two points. This fact is almost easier because we don't even have to do any looking at the graph. So let's just let's just for sake we'll just call this one. Um, we'll call this one x1. We'll call this one y1, and this we'll call this one x2. And this one y2. So let's do our formula. So um, y2 minus y1 is 15 minus negative 6 over x2 minus x1, or 5 minus negative 2. All right. So um, we know that when we subtract negative numbers, we just end up adding them. So it becomes 15 plus 6, which is equal to 21, over 5 minus negative 2. Um, two negative numbers, uh, two negative signs cancel out, so it just becomes 5 plus 2. 21 over 7, which is just equal to 3. So now that let's know the slope of this line is 3. We do the same thing here. Um, we call the, well, let's call this one x2 and y2 and call this one x1 and y1. So um, for x2, we, we, for, um, to calculate the slope, we just subtract y2 and y1. So negative 12 minus 4 over 3 minus negative 1. Um, we know that the um, this turns into negative 12 minus 4, which is negative 16, over 3 minus negative 1, which is 4. So you know the slope of this line is negative 4. So, negative versus positive slopes. A line that decreases or as you go farther to the right, the y values will decrease, has a negative slope. And the line that increases, as you go farther to the right, the y values will increase, has a positive slope. So, slopes of horizontal and vertical lines. So we're going to uh, um, calculate the um, slope of this line right here. So this line right here is, um, is a uh, horizontal line, and we'll calculate the slope. We use the same formula. Um, x2. So let's call this point x2 and y2. Call this one x1 and y1. So let's subtract 5 minus 5 over 3 minus 0. So you know that this just becomes 0 over 3, which is just 0. So the slope of a horizontal line is 0. That actually makes a lot of sense because we know that as you go to the farthest to the right, the y values never increase. And if you go far to the left, the y values don't change at either. So there is no slope because um, the, the y value always stays constant. And that's why a horizontal line has a slope of 0. So this one, the second one is a vertical line. And let's find the slope of that. So let's call this one x2, y2. This one x1, y1. So 3 minus 0 over 2 minus 2. So we get 3 over zero. So as we, as I said in the previous chapter, um, when you divide any number by zero, the slope becomes undefined. So the slope of a vertical line is um, undefined. So if a teacher ever asks you what the slope of a vertical line is, just say undefined. Um, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.